Hi, it's Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to perform a USB BIOS flashback on this motherboard here. This is the MSI Pro B650-A Wi-Fi. It's a pretty straightforward thing to do, um, as long as you follow some sort of procedures, make sure that the drive is formatted correctly and all that kind of stuff, which, don't worry, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. And also, we'll be going through some troubleshooting tips as well, so if you're trying to do this already, and for some reason your board does not flash in, then hopefully some of the tips in this video will uh, set you on the right path. So starting off, what do you actually need to perform the task? So obviously, you're going to need the motherboard itself, which we've got here, something to rest it on. I'm going to use the motherboard box, that's absolutely fine. Also, you're going to need a ATX power supply with, you will need the 24-pin main power connector, and also the EPS one, so EPS, no, PCI, make sure you get the right one, EPS connector, that goes in the top corner of the board. You'll also need a USB stick, ideally 32 gigabytes or less. You can get away with a drive as small as 64 megabytes, but uh, 32 gigabytes is the biggest. Now you can potentially use larger drives, but you'd have to create a smaller FAT32 file partition actually on the drive. Now this has limited success, we will link a video in the video description, so if you have got a larger drive and you haven't got a 32 gig partition, then you can create one on a drive. Again, it's not ideal, so if you can, just grab yourself a cheap little USB drive. It can be USB 2, USB 3, like I said, 64 megabytes is the smallest you can get away with, or anything up to 32 gigabytes. Also as well, you'll need a PC which is working to actually get access to the internet. So uh, either another PC, laptop, or go to the local library, whatever, or into a friend's house. And you'll need to go to the MSI website. Again, I'll link that in the video description. So you've got all the links you need there. Uh, other than that, that is pretty much it. Now the entire process should take you somewhere in the region of about 15 to 20 minutes in total, including formatting the drives, flashing the BIOS and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it shouldn't take too long at all. There are some things to look out for as we're going along. And again, I will talk to you about those. One of the things as well with modern systems, generally when you're using USB drives on modern computers, they'll try and format the drives to GPT. Now the GPT format isn't suitable for BIOS flashback. For that, you do need MBR. So again, if you have a drive and for some reason it's not flashing, you may need to convert your USB stick from GPT to MBR. Again, I'll put a link in the video description so you can check on that to make sure it is okay. Potentially you might need to run the clean command on the drive just to reset it back to its factory defaults. But anyway, I think that is pretty much it. So let's get started. We'll head over to the computer and we'll start with downloading the BIOS. Then we'll go ahead and format our USB stick and prepare that. We'll then put the BIOS onto the stick and then we'll come back and do the actual flashing process. Okay, so here we are on the MSI website for this motherboard. So msi.com forward slash motherboard forward slash blah, blah, blah. Anyway, links in the video description. Just make sure that this looks like the board you've actually got. And also something to look out for, if your motherboard is in a PC which has been pre-built from another manufacturer, potentially they may have a custom BIOS. So again, if you're having problems flashing the BIOS onto the motherboard, it may be if your PC is from somewhere like iBuyPower or those kind of OEM retailers, then you may have a slightly different BIOS. Generally, you can tell this by when you turn the system on for the first time, you may see their system logo rather than saying MSI. Again, potentially if you're having problems, then seek advice from the computer's manufacturer. For everyone else who's got a retail board like we have here, you head over to the support tab and it should automatically go to the BIOS tab. If not, just click on it. You've got the drivers and utilities, etc. But go to the BIOS, and generally you want to get the very latest BIOS. Now, if for some reason your motherboard is significantly older than the latest BIOS, you may need to actually perform this in steps. I would suggest maybe every time you do it, maybe like jump a year at a time. So it's 2025 now, depending when you're watching this video. So if you've got an older board that's maybe on a, I don't know, an early 2024 BIOS, you might want to go kind of halfway and do halfway steps. Luckily for us at the moment, this isn't too old a board, so we should be absolutely fine. And I did actually notice that on the box itself, this particular motherboard does say that it's Ryzen 9000 series ready. So that means it's actually relatively new, but we do want to have it so it's ready for the latest and greatest processors, such as the 99X3D. So that's what we're going to do, we'll get the very latest version. Again, if there are beta versions available, you can go for those, it's absolutely fine. Now that the B650 boards are slightly less of a kind of priority for MSI, they don't always get around to doing validation checks quite as quickly as they would for the 800 series. So if the latest one is a beta BIOS, generally it's going to be absolutely fine. Anyway, with all that said, let's hit on the download button. 
and we'll save this to our desktop so it's nice and easy to find. It shouldn't take very long at all, it's only a very small file. We can minimize that when it's done and go to the Windows desktop, right click on the file and choose Extract All. This will unzip or decompress the file or folder rather. When you're ready, click on Extract and go into this folder and you've got two files. One of which is a text file, which gives you information about the BIOS. This one here is the actual BIOS file. Now, if you're not using USB BIOS flashback and you just want to flash your BIOS from actually within the BIOS, you can just copy this file as it is, put it onto a USB stick and flash it from using MSI mFlash within the BIOS. But if you have a non-working system because your CPU is not currently supported, you will need to rename this to something that MSI can actually recognize. Now, in order to do that, you need to rename this file. So if you can't see the file extension, you may need to click on view, then go down to show, and then choose file name extensions and potentially hidden items if you can't see it at all. So make sure both of those are checked. When they are, you can click on the file, just double click, and we want to rename this to msi.rom. and then remove the rest of it. So there we go, msi.rom, press enter, and you'll get a message saying, uh, if you change the file name extension, it may become unusable. That's fine, we have no choice, it needs to be done. Uh, people often ask me, why is it called msi.rom? It's just the way that the system works, it has to be called that, otherwise it will not flash it. That's just the way it is. Uh, make sure the file is 32 megabytes or 32,000 kilobytes, and that is pretty much it. So now we need to put it onto our USB drive. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick the USB into the computer. And this one's already got a BIOS on it. So I'm gonna format the drive just to be on the safe side and also so you can see the process. So we'll find our USB drive, right click and choose format. And in this box here, make sure it says FAT32. It can't be XFAT or NTFS, that won't work. It has to be FAT32. The allocation size you can set to default and if there's anything in the volume label, I would suggest removing that and also make sure that quick format is enabled. When you're happy, click on start. You'll get a message saying that all the data is gonna be erased on the disk. So obviously if there's any data on the disk that you wish to keep, now is a good time to move it off of the drive for safekeeping. Otherwise, if you're happy, click on okay. And you should find a message saying format complete. So that is our drive ready. So we can close this now. And now we just need to copy the ROM from our Windows desktop onto the USB stick. Now there's various ways you can do that. You can just drag and drop it if you want to, or just right click, choose cut or copy. Then go to a USB drive, right click and choose paste. Again, you can do drag and drop if you wish to. The choice is entirely up to you. So that is pretty much it for the drives and also for getting the BIOS file on there. So now we can head over to our little setup and get the BIOS flashed. Okay, so now we're ready to flash the BIOS. We've got our USB stick here with all the information on. So I'm just gonna grab the motherboard, stick it on top of the box. I think that's probably the, uh, the easiest solution to do. Now you can obviously, if you want to, if your PC is completely fully built, you can still do it this way. It's just that on these videos, I like to do it on an open test platform. Firstly, it takes away any other problems. So if there's a problem with the graphics card, the CPU, the RAM, et cetera, et cetera, or even the case itself, that is eliminated from the process. So if it doesn't flash, it means the board's basically knackered or I've done something wrong. So that is the reason why I do this. Again, if you wanna do it on a fully built system, that is entirely up to you. So let's get things connected up first of all. And if we do the EPS connector, so this is the CPU power connector. This one goes into the top of the motherboard. There's two ports there. It doesn't really make a great deal of difference which one you do. They will both supply adequate power. So that's absolutely fine. And the next one is gonna be the 24 pin main power connector, which is this one on your power supply. Probably seen some close up to this from earlier. And just plug that in. Make sure your power supply is turned off at this point and make sure that is firmly seated. Next thing to do is to work out on the back of the motherboard, which one of them is actually your BOSS flashback port. Now, if you look at the board carefully, you'll see it's actually highlighted on there. It does say quite clearly in writing which one it is. So let's go ahead and stick the USB into that port. So if we take a look at this from another angle, if you look at the back there, they've got the USB ports and it's actually highlighted. There's a little rectangle around it. And it actually says flash BIOS at the bottom there. Also, for those who are not sure, there's the BOSS flashback button, which is just there. There's probably gonna be an LED just behind it as well, which may be visible from the side. So we'll check that out. But we'll first of all put our 
USB stick into the BOSS flashback port. So there is that part ready. So now we're ready to go ahead and flash the BOSS. So we'll turn on our power supply if it's not turned on already, which I think it probably isn't. So yeah, power supply is now switched on. Now I've got an overhead view as well, so you can see what the power supply is doing and also the LEDs on the motherboard. So yeah, you can uh, you can see what's going on there. I might even try and split screen it so we can see what's going on. But what you want to do is to get the USB flashback button, just press it in for a couple of seconds until it starts flashing, which we may or may not be able to see from this angle. So one, two, three. And fortunately, just from the side, actually I think you can see it on the video as well. Yeah, it was flashing very briefly. Our power supply has spun up and also we've got some LEDs on the motherboard itself. So that is the DRAM and also the CPU. And the LED actually on the motherboard is flashing quite quickly. If I turn that round, you can just see the uh, flash back there. And the motherboard is now flashing the BIOS. So this is actually gonna change speeds a couple of times. So it'll start off flashing quite quickly. Then it will probably slow down a little bit and then flash quickly. And then at the end, the BIOS LED will turn off. Now that is the bit we're waiting for, so just be patient, let it do its thing. If you get to a point where it flashes about three or four times and then stops altogether, that means it can't read either the USB stick or potentially it cannot read the actual file on the USB stick. So make sure you uh, recheck your steps, make sure those are all okay. Um, otherwise as well, if it just flashes constantly, doesn't change its speed whatsoever and just carries on doing it for more than about seven or eight minutes, that means, again, it cannot read the file. So just make sure that you retract your steps and uh, check your BOSS file. Maybe even try a different USB stick just in case there's some kind of compatibility issue with the one you're particularly using. So again, we'll just be patient here, let it do its thing. It should take about another four minutes or so from here. So yep, yeah, we'll come back when it's done. And there we go, the power supply has just clicked off. And you see the boss flashback light turned off briefly there and flashed a couple of times. And we're still left with the diagnostic LEDs because clearly there's no processor and there's no RAM. So having the red LED for no CPU and having the amber LED for no RAM that makes absolute sense because neither are there. And actually the memory controller is built into the CPU. So that's why we get both lights at the same time. So at this point now, we're happy that it's done. The light has extinguished completely from here so it means it's safe to turn off the system so turn off the power supply and wait for the leds to turn themselves off that's done so now we can remove the usb stick and at this point now you can choose to either carry on building your system and on this little test bench setup or if you've got a fully built system just turn it on and you should find that it now works so there we go, that is the uh, motherboard flash we're ready to go again if you get any problems or you've got any issues that you're finding with doing your boss flashback feel free to head over to our discord it's completely free of charge to join links will probably be in the video description if you scroll down far enough but yeah otherwise i think that is pretty much it hopefully the video has been useful if it has smash the like button if you want to see more content of like this on a daily basis maybe consider hitting subscribe and the chime notification that way you'll be notified of future video releases but for now i've been mike this is mike's unboxing reviews and how to and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video thanks for watching